Welcome to Whispers to a Bride, where we talk about the stuff no one else is talking about. We are going deep on the emotional aspects of getting married, the stress, drama, and turbulence that affects your own sense of identity and your closest relationships. We are talking about what it means to be a bride and how to navigate the sacred time with more grace and ease. I'm your host, Kara Gassabe. As a life coach and therapist, I'm going to be sharing super practical tips so that you can not only rise to the occasion of your wedding, but also your life. Now, hello, and welcome back. I am Kara, your favorite wedding therapist, life coach, bride whisperer, helping you get through this time in your life that is so exciting, so beautiful, so wonderful, but also so stressful, so disorienting, and so overwhelming. And today, I want to talk about that final day freak out. This idea for a conversation came from this sort of flurry of inquiries I've been getting in my Instagram DMs. I love it when you guys pop in there and tell me what's going on with you. But I'm getting this like, it all seems to be like five days out from their wedding, maybe like five to seven. They're like, my wedding is next week. My wedding is this Saturday. Like I am days away, not months, not weeks, days away. And I'm freaking out. One woman was like, I don't even want to go. Another woman was just like, I am so just jacked up with disappointment in my friends and anxiety about like all the eyes on me and just, just overwhelmed with so many things that felt like they hadn't come together in the way that she hoped they would, both on the logistic side and also on the sort of support system relationship side with like her people, her inner circle. And This stuff is hard to solve for when the big event is right around the corner, right? So some of these people, I'm able to like get a session scheduled and we can really talk through and really hone in on like, what exactly is it? What are the thoughts? What are the feelings? What are the dynamics that are really at play and at the forefront of this just really icky feeling of anxiety as the day is approaching and having them feeling really just in that panic state. We've talked about before, like it's completely normal to feel anticipatory, just sort of that like on high alert, it can feel anxious. It can just feel like excitement. And sometimes those two things, it can be scary. Those feelings can often be really similar and you're just going to be sort of hyped up as your wedding is coming, right? There's just, it's been a long time coming. It's been a lot of efforts, a lot of planning. And now it's like, days away. So you're going to, it's very normal to feel all of that. But these women seem to have just like that energy, but then also this layer of like sadness and dread and disappointment that is really weighing them down as opposed to just that sort of energetic frenetic energy of like, oh my gosh, let me check my list again. Let me figure out last minute logistics. Let me, you know what I mean? There's that. And then there's just the like, feeling like disgusted and depleted and overwhelmed. And again, all of it's really normal, but I think it's important if you're feeling sort of that second version where you've got just that added layer of real sadness or sorrow or just that a little bit of a darker tinge to the anticipation and anxiety and nervousness that is the more predictable feeling that you thought you knew you would have, it would feel frenetic. It would feel like a lot, but this is just like feeling icky and almost like you don't want to go to your own wedding. I feel like that's when you really need to, first of all, try and get a session. I always try to squeeze people in because it's one of those moments where unlike a lot of things in life where you have a lot of at bats, like your wedding, you don't. So I want to give you every resource I possibly can to allow you to sort of stabilize in order to enjoy the day, to show up for the day, if that's what you want to do. It could be that you really don't want to go and that's the right choice. And that's a whole other session and topic, but getting you resourced enough emotionally and mentally, spiritually to kind of get through this moment with as much grace and dignity and fun and joy 
as you can. So always reach out if you are in this position and you're feeling like, oh my gosh, it's too late. It's never too late to get yourself what you need and what you deserve. I think that's so important. A lot of my girlies are the perfectionists and the people pleasers. So they'll like talk themselves out of it because they're like, oh my God, I should have called you like six months ago when I first heard of you, but I thought it was okay, but then I didn't. And now it's too late. It's it's never too late. Don't beat yourself up. One of those things on the last couple episodes, if you can fix it. And if you've got a minute, schedule a call. And then the other thing is like, they'll overthink of like, that I won't have time or that I'll like, no, this is about you and what you need. You ask, you receive. That's how it works. Really try and showing up for yourself is such a hard thing for so many of my clients. So this is just your reminder that you get to ask for help and you deserve help and women helping each other in this really special way at this really special time in life is something that you will always cherish. And it's a muscle that I want you to strengthen because as you tackle the next challenges and milestones in your life, I think you're going to realize that like the more you surround yourself with women who have been there, who understand, who want to give you that safe space to really go through what you're going through. It is one of the best assets you can have in your life. And people cultivate this with friends or certain family members can do that. Professionals, like there's a lot of ways to get there. I'm just one of them, but whoever that is in your life, however that is, I want you to lean into it. Because I think one of the reasons that people are afraid for like that last minute intervention or even mentioning it, their feelings when it's a week away, they make themselves so stressed by the idea of if they say it out loud or acknowledge it themselves, it's going to all fall apart. And like reaching out to someone like a life coach or a therapist, I think they there's this worry, which makes complete sense. There's this worry, there's this fear that like, we're going to open Pandora's box and like whatever issues come up, we're not going to be able to get the box tied up and looking pretty to like get you down the aisle. And so I think that's one of the things that keeps us afraid of ourselves and that keeps this space between what we're really feeling and what we're acknowledging that we're feeling or what we're letting other people in on is that we're just afraid of our feelings being too big. We're afraid of our issues being too much. And it keeps us locked down. It keeps things bottled in. And literally the opposite is true. So today I want to just say, if you are in that final stretch and you're having that final freak out, the most important thing you can do besides reaching out to someone like me is finding some way to get everything on your mind, out of your mind. So a true venting session, a true journaling session is the most loving thing you can do for yourself in that moment. Because what happens is there are so many thoughts that are swirling and so many like tactical things and then like big historical relationship things and then future projecting things, right? There's a lot going on from like the existential to like the super practical and you get caught in this loop and you really can have a tough time locating what is the real source of the pain? What are the real things that need to be fixed or addressed or managed? What are the things that can be like put on a shelf for a later time to unpack? And so that's the nature of this beast is first, just letting everything out so that then you can sort of look at what you're dealing with without the fear that there's some kind of mandate to solve all your problems and fix all the things before you head down the aisle. That's never the goal. That is completely like in life. Good luck if that's the goal, because even though I'm always trying to get there, I'm starting to realize that like, you're never really there. There's no there. There's just here. So I think the real name of the game is like these sort of small turns toward more peace, more ease, more integrity, more alignment, right? Being a truer version of ourselves in how we show up in the world. So again, I just think the most important thing you can do is get everything out. So call up a friend and be like, listen, I don't want any advice. I don't want feedback. I don't want you to fix it. I just want you to like 
hear what is on my heart because there is so much more healing in just letting the things out of your mind and out into the world, onto another person, onto the pages of a journal. And then you get to look back at it and you will look at what is on that paper with such a different perspective than when you are experiencing it as noise in your mind, right? And your mind is constantly like chewing on it and trying to make narratives of it and trying to make sense of it and trying to make the enemies and allies and the strategies and the regrets and the self-punishing, like it'll do so many things. But if you just write it down, you can look at it with such a different perspective. Like, my gosh, like when I, when I read it back to myself, that just, that's not really important or that's not really what's upsetting me. And there's just this energetic thing that happens when we do unload and we vent and we journal in an intentional way, right? This isn't just your like mundane complaining, like this is just this, right? We're not just, we're asking for a sacred space where you're saying, you're not just calling up or running into someone and just start blah, 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 unloading at the cashier. We're saying to like someone who cares about you, someone who like has your best interest in mind, has your heart, wants to help, and you just need them to receive your energetic sort of expulsion so that you can have some space from it, get some distance and get some perspective on it. And also get it out of you. It's sort of toxic when it's just you ruminating on your own shit. Like it's just too much spiraling with no like counter force to give you a little bit of balance. And so I was thinking about some of the messages I get and like, there's two that I'm thinking of right now where they're just like laundry list. Like there's this and this and this and this and this, I think this, but there's this and it's just like going and going. And I'm like, yes, like I'm reading it. Like, yes. Like tell me everything, let it all out there. Let like the petty stuff, the big stuff, the unfixable stuff, the ridiculous stuff, like whatever it is, letting it out, letting it out, letting it out, letting it out. And then like when I was DMing back with this one woman, I'm like, here's the thing, like, you know, here's a few thoughts. And a lot of what I was helping her with was just ways of looking at it and ways of holding all of it at once, right? One of my favorite podcast episodes is episodes is called hold two things, right? And that's just the idea that like, there's always this duality. There was always the dark and the light. There's always the joy and the sorrow. And they're so closely linked. And we're always being forced to sort of have them together when we really kind of want to separate them. Like, this is the happy time. This is the sad time. This is the easy time. This is the hard time. Weddings kind of show you that it's all happening at once. And so allowing yourself to expand into a spirit and a person who can accommodate both instead of trying to bat one away or push one down or focus on only one, you're going to be able to feel more joy and more ease when you allow for and accommodate and acknowledge the icky, the awful, the disappointing, the ridiculous, right? So when I was writing back to her and giving her a couple of maybe things to think about or ways to reframe because I just think that narrative is so, so useful and important and healing. The other thing that I ended it with is I am now holding this for you. So I know her wedding date and I know her worries. I know her fears. I know her troubles. I know her desires. I know her frustrations, right? So I know what's on her heart. And Again, this person, I don't know, right? She came from podcast land into Instagram DMs. And so, but what I'm able to do is hold it for her. So she can walk around being like, somebody knows, right? Because I have no stake in this game. I have no connection to her, except that I just want the best for her as a podcast listener and as a bride and as a fellow just woman walking through this world. I'm like, I'm holding this for you on Saturday while you're getting married. I'm going to be thinking of you and holding all of your heart and what's on it with me, which then allows you to walk a little lighter because A, 
you don't feel as crazy because someone has heard you and validated you and seen you in your disarray and your pain and your anxiety and your overwhelm, right? Someone's witnessed you. And that number, right? That is one of the most healing and important things. That's what therapy and coaching, so much of it is just like being seen and heard and held. And that last part, I think is the point that gets lost in a lot of sort of our human interaction is like, I'm literally saying like, I'll hold your burden for you because for me, it's not heavy, right? It's not my mom that's doing the thing. It's not my friend ship that's crumbling in that instance, right? It's hers. And I can hold it with such compassion and care, but also lightness, right? And I think that's what we forget. When we share our burdens and our troubles with people, we think that like we're burdening them. And sometimes it can be if you're not really mindful about who and how you are unloading and how you're venting, right? So that's why I'm like thinking about being really mindful. And if all else fails, your journal has got your back. Like you, that's a version of you having you. And that is the best. But just this idea of of an exchange where, right? The beautiful crisp white pages are now holding your pain, your anxiety, your overwhelm, your greatest wishes and disappointments, right? So it's being held in a really safe and yet easy way, right? The paper is happy to accommodate your thoughts in the same way that like someone like me is happy to carry that for you. And a trusted friend who you can sort of set this up with like, look, I'm just going to do this. And then you don't have to do anything. That's the thing. When people think that you're unloading for them to like fix it, then it becomes like, oh, everybody's burdened. But when you're just like, you don't have to do anything. Can you just hear me out and just kind of like make me feel less crazy by just hearing what is in my head? Right. Then they're like, oh, sure. Like if all I have to do is listen, there are some people who are very good listeners and we love them. And so if you, again, if you are in this final stage freak out and you feel like there's nothing that'll quite fix things, but you're feeling kind of desperate to do something, I really, 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 really need you to do this unloading exercise because being, again, being heard, being seen, being witnessed, and most importantly, being held, right? Somebody else holding the heavy energy will allow you to walk in on your wedding day, just you knowing that someone else or something else knows what you know, brings a level of like peace, and clarity and sanity to a situation that can often feel very ah crazy making. Because we've talked about before that bride position can be very isolating, right? You've got a ton of attention, but not always a ton of like real deep, helpful, useful support. So that is just, I don't know. I can't overstate how helpful I think it really is in this final moment. Again, you do not have to fix, solve, or do anything, but you do have to let what is inside of you out of you. And I'm telling you that exercise in itself will transmute so much of the energies that are just like racing through your body. Like our physical body cannot take what our mind has to offer all of the time of these times of high inflection of like stress and change and getting it out is just so, so healing. And that is, I think my very best advice for those final day freakouts, get it outside, just that little bit of space, right? We talk about all the time, a little bit of space between you and what's troubling you is the first and most important step to getting back to that peace, calm, confident, joyful ride that you want to be. So I hope this makes sense. And again, please, please, please reach out. You can send me a DM. You can just list all the things that are making you crazy and I will hold it for you. Give me your wedding day. And like I, every Saturday morning I wake up and think about brides. That's just like, I've been doing that since I was a kid. It's weird. I love that I can now use it in this more useful, beautiful way of like supporting you ladies. So feel free to reach out, schedule an appointment, vent, unload everything on me. And Until next time, I'm wishing you nothing but bridal bliss.